this video is going to explore Saffron Aslan in Newport 1996. This is an article uh, that really looks at how infants learn to develop language skills. I know it doesn't sound like that because the name of the article is Statistical Learning by Eight-Month-Old Infants. Um, and when we hear the word statistics, we think of like variance and means and averages and probabilities. That's not necessarily what we're talking about here. What we're talking about is a little bit different. So a little bit of background on this is that this article was published in Science in 1996, and it is incredibly popular. Uh, at, you know, to date, it has over 4,000 citations from different kind of peer-reviewed articles around the world uh, so it's been very influential uh, in the fields of cognitive psychology and developmental psychology so before we even talk about the results or the theory behind statistical learning and how it relates to language what I want to do is I want to go through the methods with you I want to give you exactly what the eight-month-old infants in the study got um, so that way you can kind of see what it's like uh, what they're exactly testing for so this next part what I want you to do is I want you to listen closely for two minutes this is gonna be very uncomfortable because you're gonna hear basically a lot of gibberish for two minutes that's okay try to stick with it and uh, I'll check back in with you after two minutes do ba da ti ba bi go ku bu la do da ti ba ta du ba bi go ku ta du ba da ti ba ta du ba bi go ku da ti ba ta du ba da ti ba bu la do bi go ku da ti ba ta du ba bu la do da ti ba bu la do bi go ku ta du ba bu la do da ti ba bu la do ta du ba da ti ba bi go ku bu la do bi go ku ta du ba bi go ku bu la do da ti ba ta du ba bi go ku da ti ba bi go ku ta du ba bu la do da ti ba ta du ba bu la do bi go ku ta du ba bu la do da ti ba bu la do bi go ku da ti ba ta du ba da ti ba bi go ku bu la do ta du ba bi go ku da ti ba bu la do bi go ku bu la do ta du ba bu la do da ti ba ta du ba bi go ku da ti ba bi go ku ta du ba bu la do da ti ba ta du ba bi go ku bu la do ta du ba da ti ba bi go ku bu la do ta du ba da ti ba bi go ku da ti ba ta du ba da ti ba bu la do bi go ku bu la do ta du ba bi go ku ta du ba bu la do bi go ku da ti ba all right, thanks for hanging in there. What you just experienced was exactly what the infants in this study experienced as well. You sat there and you listened for two minutes to basically gibberish, right? An artificial language. Uh, so that's what they did in the first part of the study. The second part of the study, though, is dedicated to testing how much you retained from that gibberish you just heard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play 16 different syllable pairings for you. It's going to be gibberish again, but what I want you to do is to uh, take out a pen and paper or even just a notepad or something you can type into, and I want you to type whether or not the syllable pairing that you hear is from this artificial language or if it's not from this artificial language. So you should be writing down yes or no for these 16 pairings. I'm going to play this. It's going to last about two minutes, and I'll check in with you in just a moment. Bulado. La do bi ti ba ta do bi go bi go ku da ti ba do ba bu 
Duba Tibata Do Bi Go Du Ba Bu Bi Go Ku Bu La Do La Do Bi Da Ti Ba Ta Du Ba and that's it. That's all you have to do. So pretty easy, right? No, it actually feels kind of hard, but you probably did better than you thought that you did. Keep in mind that eight month old infants were able to do this with surprising levels of accuracy, which is part of the reason why the study is so famous and so well cited. And so here you can see the results, trials one through 16 and the different syllable combinations, and then the correct responses, whether it was a word or whether it was not a word. So take a second to look at your results to see how you did. So let's, let's break this down. The first trial here, ba, la, do, is a syllable combination that you would probably find in that artificial corpus of speech or that artificial language. The ba is likely to precede la and the la is likely to precede do. But the second trial, however, la, do, bi, that's a non-word. It didn't come from the artificial language of speech and you're probably able to pick that out because do does not often precede bi. So you, when you were listening to that, you probably determined that, hey, this doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like something that would have come out of that language that I previously learned in that prior two minutes. So now we have a problem. And that problem is that babies can't write. Babies can't do what you just did. They can't write down yes or no, depending on if they recognize that word or don't recognize that word. So Saffron, Aslan, and Newport had to find a way around that. They had to find something else that they could measure. And so what they decided to do is they measured something called listening time. So in order to study listening time, in order to measure it out, basically what researchers had to do was make an inference. And that inference is based on the observation that infants love new stuff. They love interesting, new, unfamiliar objects. And you know this if you've ever been around an eight-month-old infant or some you know little, little kid. They like new things. They like new toys. They like uh, new colors. They like new sounds. If a, new, if a person that they are unfamiliar with walks into the room, they're going to focus on the individual walking into the room. So what they did in order to kind of measure listening time is they basically observed how long were the infants staring at the speaker from where these sounds were playing from. And so here's the inference. If infants are presented with a word that is unfamiliar to them, they should stare at that speaker or where that sound is coming from longer than if it was a familiar word, if it was a familiar word that they had learned already. So they're measuring how long is the infant staring at the speaker when they hear an unfamiliar word, and how long are they staring at the speaker when they do hear a familiar word, based on just those two minutes of gibberish that you heard already. So let's look at their results. So this is the table that was presented in their original article, and I'm gonna highlight the important bits right here. So for novel items, you can see that they are attending longer uh, than they are for familiar items. In other words, um, what this means is that they were able to differentiate novel versus familiar syllable combinations. So basically that task that you just did, they were able to do that. And they let us know that they were able to do that by how long they were focused focusing on the speaker or where that sound was coming from. And so what this shows is that for these kind of familiar syllable combinations, infants were able to pick up on that. For the unfamiliar syllable combinations, infants were able to pick up on that. And why this is such an important study is because it shows that at a really, really early age, even as as young as eight months old, the infants are able to parse apart likelihood. They're able to understand what is likely to be a word and what is not likely to be a word. So extrapolating from their findings, kind of what they're arguing is that uh, whenever we learn any kind of language, the way that we do that is basically through immersion, that we are listening to lots and lots of different sounds all at once, and our brain is kind of putting together these word boundaries for words that are likely to occur and words that are not likely to occur. And based on these repetitions and these syllables that we think are likely to occur next to one another, uh, we start to draw boundaries in our language based on that. 
So it's a very elegant study, very short. Uh, I recommend you read it if you haven't read it already. Um, and that's basically Saffron Aslan and Newport in a nutshell. Thanks for listening. Bye.